So a couple months ago, I checked out this Linux distribution. This is Jing OS. What it is, is a iOS-like Linux distribution specifically designed to go onto tablets. In that previous video, it was rather archaic. Some of the things didn't work. It was using a lot of the KDE Plasma stuff, such as their App Store, things like that. But it's recently gotten a pretty large update. So what we're going to do is take a look at it again and see if the improvements are actually good improvements. Now, looking over here on their actual release note for version 0.8, you can see that the settings app has been redesigned. The files app has been redesigned. They now have an app store. There's OTA support. There's been improvements in setting passwords and network passwords when actually installing it. Uh, there's been improved functions and experience in the task manager. Icons on the desktops can be rearranged. App resolution is auto adjusted now for higher resolution displays, bug fixes, and a new wallpaper. So just like last time, we are going to just do a quick walkthrough of this distribution and check out some of these new improvements. I will note there's a huge con of this distribution, in my opinion, that has to do with how you have to download it, but I'm gonna talk about that more at the end of this video. So here is Jing OS. Now the only thing I've done so far is type in the password to get to the screen. The default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just gonna run through this exactly how it looks here. You can see where my cursor is, is just a resemblance of where a finger would be on a touch screen. So we're gonna go start now. We're gonna go with our wired connection. Uh, this is a negative right here. You actually have to agree to a terms of service, but upon further investigation, they do information collection. And here we go. Let's check this out real quick. So who are we? So it's actually kind of good that they have this. We are a company in Beijing, so it's another Chinese distribution. I just checked out DeepIn, so if for some reason you like Chinese Linux distributions, you'll like that video too. And this is probably going to be one of the last Chinese distros I check out for a minute. Uh, we see they have their specific addresses, and this is for information collection. What information do they collect? Uh, your Mac address, your device type, your software version, uh, country, time zone, uh, your plasma versions, why do we collect it, user experience. So basically you have to agree to let them collect that basic information. So for this purpose, I will say, okay, I am the 8,826 user. That's definitely up from last time I checked this out. So let's get started here. And this is Jing OS. We can just swipe this way, swipe this way. If we had other icons to navigate in between the actual pages here. So first let's check out this top bar. If I click on time, it doesn't do anything, but it looks like I could drag it down. So if you go to the little clock and drag it down, you have your notification center. Looks like we have updates available. Let's just put that away for now. If we go over here and drag down, we have some of our settings. So this is very familiar to what the Apple iOS looks like. We have our ringer, our wired connection. You have a little audio widget and then shortcuts to your settings. And I'm not sure what this is. This might be to take a screenshot. Yep, screenshot and Plasma Workspace. You can see that this is a highly modified version of KDE Plasma. Now, before we actually check out too many of these applications, let's go ahead and install the system. Uh, before we do that, I wanna see what this does. So let's click on this. Oh, it's kind of glitchy. It's a little swipe up thing that doesn't seem to work. So let's install the system and check out what this is. So this is a standard Linux installer. So American English, next. Is it not gonna let me do it? American, let's go British. Nope, no British either. So I guess we're not installing it today. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to work or if it's not supposed to work. But with that aside, let's go ahead and check out some of these applications. You see they have the Chromium web browser by default. When we do open up applications, you see it gives us a loading screen here. And it's uh, pretty big. It is designed, obviously, for a touch screen. So this does look pretty good here. You have all your basic Chromium settings. Uh, if we click this little arrow down here, this is just more stuff on our tabs. So we go ahead and close this out. We're going to use this little bar button down here which, as you can see, is fairly glitchy. I don't know if it's just because this is in a virtual machine or if it's just like that at the moment, but it is like that. Next, we have Calendar, and I do not believe this was one of the redesigned applications. I think they actually had this looking pretty good initially. So you see if I go ahead and swipe up here, it switches through the different months, and you could go ahead and add events, everything you'd expect out of a typical Calendar application on a device like this. Now, they said they updated their Files application, so let's see what this looks like here. Pretty good. This is kind of what I would want to see out of a touch-based Linux distribution. You can see they have some documents and stuff in here. Probably manuals. I know they have a video in here that we checked out earlier, which actually goes over the system. If we go ahead and open that up, 
good there's no audio. We can see somebody that they probably hired is uh, talking about Jing OS, and then they go through and talk about all the different functionalities, and eventually it's going to be on a phone. So this is a nice little overview video going over it. So let's go ahead and back out of here. And I believe that this is played with MPV, which is actually a pretty good choice for a media player, especially on a device like this. So the files application is looking pretty good. So we can close out of that. Next we have photos. So I believe this is one of the other applications that was already looking pretty good. You just swipe in between all your pictures and videos and all that. If I pull down, you can see we can crop images. We can apply effects. So actually, let's go ahead and try to do that real quick or not. Maybe we can crop. Okay, so we can crop, but the effects doesn't work quite yet. So if I go ahead and drag this over, oh, that's cool, it has a nice blur effect, so you can actually see what you're cropping out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of here. And this is my actual desktop now. Uh, photos, we checked out. Calculator, we checked out before. Clock, we checked out before. We'll actually open it up to see if there's been any significant changes. Nope, looks the same. You have your alarms over here, stopwatch, timer. It's all looking good. Uh, media player, last time we looked at this, it was just MP4 or MPV on the desktop, but I don't see a, uh, a thing up here on the top or any way to actually see like the version numbers of these applications or anything like that. We have a camera, it's not going to work. System settings, they said they improved, but we can see that it's using the uh, KDE Plasma icon. Uh, it looks the same. They might have like changed the resolution or changed the sizing of it. Uh, we have a couple WPS office applications. And then down here we have a terminal. So I believe that this is a Debian based system. So if I go like sudo, beautiful. Yes. Let's see if they have their own custom icon or the little NeoFetch logo or anything like that. Or if it's just going to show like a Debian logo. So NeoFetch. Oh, just the penguin. This is like the default. We don't know what this is. Emoticon thing here. So we see Jing OS Preview Edition. We're in VirtualBox. Uh, this is the 5.4 kernel running Bash. Default is 1700 packages, so it's a pretty heavy distribution out of the gate. And I'm using right now almost 3 gigabytes of system memory, so that is absolutely wild. Especially considering the only thing I'm running is this terminal, and this is supposed to go onto a mobile device, so that's definitely something they need to take a look at the that's not going to fly loading that up on like an old even like a pine tab or something that's that, that's not going to be a good thing okay so let's let's get out of here and the main update oh so we have system settings here and we have another settings panel here so this might be the settings panel okay 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 so they just didn't remove the kde plasma settings yet so they are slowly working on their own settings application. And this does look pretty good, and it looks just like it does on an iPad, basically. We have battery. This is how much is remaining. So the, like I said, this is a beta, not beta. This is probably alpha preview release. So they're still working on everything. The one thing I will say is this is definitely a big improvement compared to their 0.6 version. When I took a look at their 0.6, it was basically unusable. So now that we do know that they have a actual settings application here with some... Uh, pretty good stuff going for it so far. Ooh, what's that? Uh-oh. Looks like my uh, my little touch pointer thing broke there for a minute. Um, okay, so they said they updated the App Store. This is something I'm actually interested in. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So they have Opera. I wonder what this is based on, or if they just developed it themselves. So supposedly you can run VirtualBox on here. I'm not too sure about that. They have VLC, uh, LMN. LMMS, Opera, a couple different things. If we go under finance, there's no apps present, or it's just loading and I'm impatient. Uh, let's go under internet, see what internet tools they have. Or social networking, that, that's fine. There might not be anything on there. Okay, I don't think there's anything on there. Maybe just the featured applications that they got on here. Uh, weather, nothing. Video, nothing. So the base is there. They're, they're making pretty good progress. So if we go to the software update, we can see what they actually have to update. Uh, Plasma phone. So they are using a mobile Plasma version, maybe. Apt, GNOME shell. So they have a mixture of KDE and GNOME stuff on here. So that's interesting to me. Jing OS release. So if I could actually install the system, I would actually go through and... Uh, update this and it might perform a little bit better but even the live disk at almost three gigabytes of ram is absolutely wild but even then definitely some improvements so i'm going to just try one more time i'm going to hit install system and see if it just doesn't let me proceed again if it even opens oh okay try one more time oh crashed try one more time 
Um, no, I don't even think it's going to let me open it. All right, that's fine. Still improvements. This is a preview release. This is not intended to be uh, used as your primary thing on a daily basis quite yet. But now in the beginning of the video, I did say I did have a major problem with this, especially how they're distributing the ISO. Now, you can't just go onto GitHub or GitLab and download this. First, you have to sign up for their emailing list. So you have to give them a good amount of information just to even get this downloaded. Uh, when you do give them all that, it sends you an email with the download link. And at least when I clicked on the download link, first Firefox told me not to do it. They said it was not safe. And then when I ignored what Firefox said, my internet service provider told me, hey, you probably shouldn't go to this website. It's not safe. And I actually talked to one of the, I believe it's a developer for GingOS about this. They said it's like a popular service in China, but if my stuff or in Firefox and all that is not saying that's a good move, it's probably not a good move. And they should probably just put everything on GitLab or GitHub. And they said it was for like, they don't want a bunch of people going and downloading this because supposedly it's just for Linux enthusiasts. But if it's actually for a Linux enthusiast, um, anybody that I know who's concerned about their privacy and dealing with things from China are not going to want to do that. The best thing that the people in GingOS could do is actually just put it on GitHub, GitLab, uh, SourceForge, anything like that, and just put a disclaimer saying, hey, this is for Linux enthusiasts, it's probably not going to work right. And that's completely fine. That's what uh, Pine64 does with some of their PinePhone images. It's it's definitely not how you get Linux enthusiasts excited about a distribution. And even when I was trying to download it and I was trying to skip my, the thing through my internet service provider, their warning, uh, I couldn't get it to download, so I had to go. And actually, big shout out to Pizza Loving Nerd. He actually got me a uh, ISO image that I could use to actually make this video because it just wasn't downloading for me. Uh, Pizza Loving Nerd actually has a YouTube channel. Uh, he has a lot of good videos going over different like Pine Phone distributions. So if you're interested in that, uh, you go ahead and check out his channel. Now with all that said, my rant is over. Um, definitely the team, if they do want adoption, should focus on making the code more available and making downloads more available to Linux enthusiasts, if that is the point. Other than all that, there are definitely improvements in this versus the last version, so I am excited going forward to see what they actually improve on and what they build on. So ultimately, that wraps up this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell so you do not miss future content like this. Please leave a comment telling me what you think of market for Linux distributions in the mobile market. Over the last year or so, there has definitely been some big attempts to try to break into that market more than just Android. So with all of that said, I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.